Good day, my brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Tika John Thomas, and I am a lay minister at St. Margaret's Anglican Church. Today, I will be leading us in prayer this Holy Tuesday. I start this service with a prayer in time of disaster, which is found on page 84 on the, of the Book of Common Prayer. God of goodness and love, in whom we can trust in every hour of our need. Have mercy on all who are faced with fear and distress through this COVID-19 pandemic. We ask that help may be given to them speedily and that this emergency may be turned into an opportunity to strengthen the bonds of love and service which bind men and nations together through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I continue with the prayer for the future of humanity on page 82. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I continue with the collect for Holy Tuesday. The Lord be with you. This is found on page 165. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's Gospel is found in John chapter 12, verses 20 to 36. Some Greeks seek Jesus. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, So, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth, a grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this will, will keep it for eternal life. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that they may, so that my servant will be with me where I am and my Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me, but that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven, I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said was a thunder, while others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. The crowd answered, our law tells us that the Messiah will live forever. How, then, can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus answered, The light will be among you a little longer. 
continue on your way while you have the light so that the darkness will not come upon you for the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going believe in the light then while you have it so that you will be the people of the light the word of the lord thanks be to god so we wish to see jesus this is what the greeks said to philip it is not an unusual request i suspect that most of us have said or thought it i wonder however if the visitors who came to philip had any idea what they were asking i wonder if we know what we are asking it seems a simple enough request but Jesus's response is anything but simple. Unless a grain of wheat falls onto the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant be also. Somehow, death and seeing Jesus are intimately related. To see Jesus is more than looking at him. It is more than just believing the things he said and did. We follow Christ as participants, not spectators. If we want to see Jesus, then we must learn to die. However, if we avoid and deny death, we refuse to see Jesus. Seeing Jesus means dying to all the parts of our life that blind us. The parts that we are good with, even if they are not of God. Ultimately, it means dying to our own self-sufficiency. We let go of our life to receive God's life. This new life is a life connected to Christ. And we all want that. A life connected to Christ. Dying to ourselves is difficult, even painful. We have to give up the life that we are accustomed to, the life that we are used to, the things that we can that we think we cannot live without. It is as Jesus describes soul troubling it is nerve wracking as we begin to think of a lot of what ifs I can't do this I can't and even how could I how can I give this up dying however brings begins to clarify and heal our vision we see a new life a new way of being it looks like Jesus and his way of living and being. That's what this week is about. Holy Week is a school of learning how to die. And death is the window through which we see Jesus. But we must be careful, however, that we don't get stuck spectating, looking at the window, rather than looking through the window. Dying is not the end, but a means, a way of transforming who we are now to what God needs us to be. Dying means we are looking through the window. We are means we are being participant. Do you want to see Jesus? Look at the ways in which and places where, all, where your life is most guarded, insulated, and isolated. Those are places of blindness, places that need to die, that, need, that we need to let go of. Each one of those is a grain of wheat containing fruit. Let it fall into the earth and die, and you will see Jesus. I want you to continue with me as I make my intercessions. Brothers and sisters, 
I ask for your prayers for our nation and all the nations of the world during this COVID-19 pandemic. Pray for all those in need and trouble. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for the leaders of our nation and all nations of the earth. Let us pray that they continue to make sound decisions to keep all their people safe at this time. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for the medical professionals working hard at finding a cure for this disease. Pray that the Lord, through their knowledge and expertise, gives them the positive result that the world so desperately needs. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for all the medical frontliners working with those suffering from this dreaded disease. Pray that the Lord continues to give them strength to continue doing what they are doing and keep them safe while working with those who have been infected. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for all persons throughout the world who have been infected. Pray for a speedy recovery. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for those who have died from COVID-19 especially those of our country. Pray that they will be our only casualties in this land and pray for all their souls. Brothers and sisters, I ask for your prayers for the families of those who have been infected or who have died during this pandemic. Give them strength and faith in this time. I would like to take this moment to thank each and every one of you who sat with me this Holy Tuesday and I pray that God continues to protect you and your family and friends. I look forward to seeing all of you where we are once again able to assemble in God's house. Do enjoy the rest of your day.